the um FOMC will be interesting today. Again, just as it, I'm not sure whether you know many of you haven't been trading uh at trading 180 where you know we've um kind of had FOMC meetings, but I'm not really sitting around um looking um to 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 trade the FOMC. It's very can be very volatile, um, especially because it's it's kind of like a speech. And so um, unless you're listening to it live, and even if you're listening to it live, it's you know, it's how do you interpret what Jerome Powell and you know and, and the data and what they're what they're saying, right? For me, I always look for the dust to settle, you know, that, that evening, you know, the next day, look at what the banks, are, how the banks are interpreting the information and then make a decision from there because there will always be a pullback, you know, at some point. If it's if it's that big of a deal, the market isn't just going to, you know, go straight up or straight down without pulling back. At some point, um, you know, there will be a pullback and I'll just get involved in the pullback. Uh, long gone are the days where I'm uh, reacting to... Um, to uh you know price moves unless it is an an absolute you know uh the market has been caught offside right that i think that's the only time you know i will definitely consider um uh you know taking a trade um you know live news a news trade live but other than that it's pretty much just uh you know hands um sitting on my hands um Anyone got any questions, by the way, or any comments? Anything they want to mention about the uh, about FMC, the dollar, etc. You can turn your mic on if it's easier for you to turn your mic on. Are you guys just sitting back listening? All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was typing, but it was just just <laughs> taking yeah, too yeah. long. Sometimes it's easier to just talk. Yeah, man. Thanks, Leon. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say, with regards to that, I've I've um, traded in the past. Um, I traded it last time, and um, um, the easy part is the actual um, uh, interest rate decision. That, that's an easy number. If it's seventy-five, yeah, you're, exactly. you're, you're, yeah. you're buying. If it's under, you're selling. Blah blah. I mean, blah. even 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 if it's seventy-five, right? So so yeah. you raise a good interesting point. Sorry sorry to cut you, but no, just, no problem, and, problem. and remember and remember what you were going to say. Yeah. Again, the edge really isn't the seventy-five basis points. Remember that the edge, because that has been priced in, yeah. yeah. And when it's when, and when I say priced in, remember, you know, it's not one. It's not like okay, whatever the price is of the dollar right at this particular point, that's the price that it will remain. Prices will stay in a bit of a range or an auction, right? So when we say it's been priced in, so the dollar's value is between, you know, at the moment, you know, uh, I don't know what the dollar, what 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 is the dollar, um. What is the dollar at right now? Uh, the dollar index. Can anyone have a quick look? Just the, just just give me a number. What the dollar index is right now? What is the dollar index right now? Right, eleven eleven fifty. Right. So at the moment, prices might be at eleven fifty. Right. So what the market has done is, let's say for example, it's been trending higher, whatever it is, and it's pulling back, and the 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 trend higher is the money has been made from the 75 basis points. Yeah. So what they've done is what they're saying is, and we spoke, we looked at, you know, the MBFG ranges before. So they could say, all right, then it's, uh, you know, the maybe the, the higher of the range might be, say, 113s, right, for the dollar. And between 113s and, let's say, for example, 110s or 109s, yeah, um, you know, is what we classify as a decent, value range for the 75 basis points right that's a decent auction between that and that and that is what really auctions and ranges are telling you they're saying that this is an expensive area this is a this is a bargain area so let's say for example 75 basis points comes out and let's say jerome powell is you know fairly he, does, he says everything that the market expects, right? In terms of you know not be, you know, being maybe being a bit hawkish, you know, maybe taking his foot off the pedal a little bit, but you know he says everything that the market expects, and the market starts to drop, yeah, and it actually drops violently, right? Doesn't mean that you know you should be a seller because price is dropping like a stone, because you have to understand that you know even though we're at the one elevens, you know, fifties, right? Remember, this right could still be the bargain price. 
because everything that is known within the market has been priced in. So this, in fact, if prices don't do come down, it could actually be just be a buying opportunity. And this is how the market gets you. It, it, it relies on retail traders just FOMOing into price, right? When And then you end up getting caught in your positions. Sometimes you might make a little bit of money. It is what it is, but the majority of traders won't, right? They'll follow the market, not understanding, in fact, you know, what is being said by Jerome Powell, what the future guidance is. And then they'll just be very reactive, get caught going the wrong side because they're FOMOing into price going either short or maybe even going long, right? Not realizing that, no, 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 no. This has all been baked in. This has all been baked in. What you need to do is just look for, in fact, just pullbacks. And if you don't understand why prices is rising, you know, to the moon or dropping like a stone, then just don't trade it, right? Don't trade until you understand the reasons for the move. That is the, you know, the best advice I can give. If, if you can, if, if, for example, you know, you, you find out that, you know, it's come out at 75 basis points, as you said, as Trading MK said, then you know exactly why it's going down, right? <laughs> you know exactly why, because then the next value area, they're going to have to revalue. Maybe it might be between, the dollar might be worth between maybe 109s, you know, at the high and maybe, you know, 104s, right? That's what the market has to kind of value. So then that becomes the new range. And all of a sudden now that would be where we are because that hasn't been priced in. Does everyone understand? Is everyone understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. So don't, yeah, so don't rush. You know what I mean? The edge isn't the 75 basis points. The edge is either 50 basis points, 100 basis points, yeah, or what, you know, Fed Chair Jerome Powell, you know, his future guidance as to what they're, you know, they're thinking about doing with rates and what, you know, the economy, et cetera. That is where the edge is. And that's a, that's a harder edge when they're talking because it's open to interpretation and you have to kind of follow the guidance of what the market is interpreting, not your own interpretation. So I don't even bother, <laughs> right? I don't even bother to um, to uh, to try to interpret what he's saying because I might think it's one way, but the market might think it's something else. Um, and then it just becomes a bit, you know, messy and, you know, I'd rather just take my cues from what the market is saying. Um, and cause I'm not in a rush to, 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 to try to just make money today. Right. I'm looking at the, the medium to long, longer term trends. And so, uh, that's what I'm looking, taking my cues for, but sorry, uh, trading MK continue your, uh, your question. Or did I answer everything? Trading MK, are you there? Hello, hello, is he there? Oh, is he hello. There? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. I was actually going to say that, but I think you uh, put it more better or articulated it than I could have. Um, that That's exactly it. Um, what I was going to say, uh, if I can add to yeah. that, is when I've traded it uh, in, the, in the past, and I'm, I'll probably trade it tonight, um, I always see a quick whiplash. Mm -hmm. So let's say tonight 75 basis points comes out. Mm -hmm. yeah and um all the retailers are thinking great 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 buy 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 mm -hmm. there's always this whiplash the other end mm -hmm. and then back up and i think that's for um for liquidity yeah 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 yeah, yeah for sure um the first few minutes yeah then it settles in yeah then it's oh can you hear me yeah can you hear you can hear, you loud okay. can you hear me okay. yeah then it settles in the direction of I use the 75 basis points. So basically, I would, what would I do? I would um I would buy the dollars, uh, short the US and short gold. Okay. Then it all gets a bit messy when you start speaking, which is like half an hour later. That's when you get th these really, really horrible whiplashing, um, you know, mess up your account, don't know what you're doing because one minute he's dovish. And uh, one minute he's hawkish because he doesn't want to spook the markets mm. and the speech. That's where I like literally, I would say five minutes for the speech. I close my, I, I close any positions I have okay. because, because that is just, it's just headache to control. <laughs> and what, what I mean by the center of aces points is I find that easier is because obviously with, with, with what I've learned from here and obviously what I know in the past, I just find that with, with my with my strategy and everything, it's just easier for me to trade that part. But when it comes to the actual him speaking, 
I'm out because okay. he he's all over the place at, yeah. with intention. And 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 I find um maybe an hour hour and a half after the speech, that's when the market finds um and you can all back test this by the way. That's when the market finds some sort of um, equilibrium, and and once it finds that equilibrium, it will go on. Well, from my back testing, it will go on that direction literally and i'm in the uk i'm talking literally all night until until london open which is a whole nother story but yeah that's that's one added my two pence okay okay well seems like you've systemized the uh you know fomcs but um i have to you know why leon i've lost so much money doing it before i had to i had to come up with some sort of system to either go in or stay out um right. and i've just watched it for literally for like a, a year right and that, that's my findings yeah, yeah it's um it's it's a difficult one to trade and uh personally horrible, trade, horrible, I, horrible. I think it's one of those things where because we we have a um a broader term perspective you're coming from i guess a, a scalping perspective right sorry yeah yeah i am sorry, yeah, yeah so yeah, with, yeah. with with whereas whereas with me um it's more um you know i'm just looking at the bigger picture more so and then waiting for the dust to settle and uh, ken says uh, market makers absolutely because uh, you know a lot of people forget about the market making the liquidity the avoidance of slippage etc so um you know it's it's a very 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 oh, sorry, yeah that's another thing in the first few seconds the slippage is horrendous yeah of course absolutely of course. horrendous <laughs> for retail trade is you know what i mean yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's crazy like you know what i mean i remember seeing i remember years ago trading um when i first started and slippage was something like uh 30 40 pips at one point you know what i mean it was Easy. yeah like Easy. Made, it was crazy anyways um but yeah i think i think however you approach it yeah however you approach I, I can just tell you my approach and of course everybody's free to do what they want with their money right so you know because i can't offer financial advice but what i will say is is that my approach is more just to do with okay you know if there is a trading opportunity for me yeah, it would have to be the actual release of the data in terms of, uh, right, yeah, it would have to be um, the release of the actual um, interest rate data. After that, it's pretty much for me impossible to kind of trade consistently. I might, I might, you know, just press buy randomly and it might go in my direction. I might sell, I might press sell randomly, it might go in my direction. But to do it consistently, you know, personally, I would rather just wait for the speech to come out tomorrow morning. You know, it's fine. You know what I mean? It's like, OK, we'll just read what the banks are saying about the move and where they expect prices to go in the next, you know, two, three, you know, four months, etc. If they've adjusted their forecasts, you know what they've taken away and then just trade in that direction. Right. That's pretty much, you know, the uh, the easier way to do it. You could do it trading MK's way. 